What's up guys, welcome back. I hope you've got your ski and do's ready. Today we're going to look at how to make the base for this angry little bagpiper. First off, we need a plinth. Now, you don't need anything fancy for this. I actually used the lid off an old bottle of shampoo. It works really well. If we check it next to the miniature, you can see it's going to be a pretty good size. The, the model is fairly small, so we should keep the plinth quite dinky too. You don't want to swamp it in a giant base. I can recommend having a look around your house for some plastic lids that would make for good bases. I think you'll be surprised how many you'll find that are going to be suitable. Next up, we're going to need some Milliput. Now, this is just the standard stuff. You can get it from most hobby stores, but there's going to be a link in the description if you want to pick some up. In addition to that, we're also going to need some paper. Just like green stuff, Milliput comes in two parts, and you're going to need an equal amount of each of them. I just cut a bit off both of the rolls and then make them into a ball so that I can easily judge which one is bigger. Here you can see that I need a bit more of the yellow stuff so I'm just going to cut a little bit more and add it to the ball. And yep, that looks about right. Alright, so once you have your two balls in hand, giggity giggity, giggity goo. Just smash them together for a few minutes until you get them evenly mixed. You'll know it's ready when you stop seeing any little streaks of grey in the putty. Once you get it nice and mixed, set it aside and start filling your lid with crumpled bits of paper. This is just to help fill the space so that you don't need to use as much milliput. Make sure the paper is tightly packed and doesn't have a lot of space to move. It's a good idea to give it a bit of a shake just to check that you can't hear any paper rattling around inside. Alright, so once you're happy, grab your milliput and just stuff it into the bottom of the lid, covering up all that paper. Press it down a bit with your fingers and use a sculpting tool to get rid of the excess milliput that's overhanging around the edge. And then after about 3 or 4 hours it's going to have set rock hard. Giggity. One of the good things about milliput is that once it's set you can sand it. So here I have a few different grades of sandpaper and I'm going to use them to level out the bottom of the plinth. Starting with a heavy grain and then moving down to a finer grain to smooth it out. Don't forget to do the sides so that you get a neat finish. You're also going to want to check it sits level on the table before moving on. If it's a bit wobbly, you're going to need to do some more sanding. This is going to create a lot of dust, so make sure you give your plinth a bit of a wipe to clean off the surface before moving on. Alright, so now that we've finished prepping the plinth, we can get to actually building the little scene. We're going to start off with some cork. I'm using quite a thin sheet of cork. You can get this in most hobby shops. It comes in various thicknesses, but my preference is to build up a few layers of thin sheets rather than just using one thick piece of cork. That way you can create a nice effect where the cork is sort of shifting positions between each layer. Rip a piece of cork from the sheet roughly the size of your plinth. Then you're going to want to pull bits off the edge until it's a little smaller than the width of the base. That will let us create a small border around the edge of our scene, making a nice frame for it. I'd avoid using a knife for this. You want the edge to be all ragged with quite a natural and organic look to it. And a knife is just going to make it look way too uniform, so it's much better to rip it with your fingers instead. Double check it's going to sit ok on the base, and once you're happy, we'll do the same sort of thing again with another piece of cork just ripping it to a similar size. However, this time we're going to let some of the cork overlap here and there so that it creates an interesting look around the edges. To attach this to the base, we'll first score the top of the plinth with a hobby knife. This just helps to give our glue something to grip onto. When you're doing this, you want to be careful that you don't cut all the way across. Remember that we want to create a little border around the cork, so you don't really want any cut marks showing near the edges. Alright, so now we'll apply some thick super glue to the cork, and you can just use a stick or a paper clip in order to help spread the glue around on the surface. Then we'll just stick that onto the plinth, making sure it sits nice in the middle there. Hopefully without gluing it to your fingers in the process. If you have some, you can use an activator spray to help speed up the drying time of the glue. This stuff acts as a catalyst and basically makes the glue bond instantly. It's pretty useful actually, I can totally recommend getting some. 
All right, so once that's in place, we'll do the same thing for the other bit of cork. Again, we can use the activator spray to speed things up a bit. We'll rip a couple more bits of cork now. Um, the idea here is to create a little path that the bagpiper is going to be walking along. So I want to build up the sides slightly so that the path is a little sunken as if it's been walked on for some time. To do that, we're going to rip a couple bits of the cork and just glue them on top close to either side, giving us something like this. There you can see the, the cool layer effect you get from using a few bits of cork instead of a single piece. Now we want this to look like natural dirt, so we're going to have to cover up all the cork with a more realistic texture. To do that we'll create a texture paste, first using some of this perfect plastic putty, and then about the same amount of some PVA glue. To that we're going to add a few different grains of sand. Now this tub that I have has a bunch of different sands in it, I just selected a few different grains and pulled them in together and mixed up a bit. And we'll also add some of this as well, it's just a bit of a bigger grain. Then we're going to mix that together with an old lollipop stick. If it's too thick you can add a bit more PVA glue. There's no real ideal consistency for this, you just want something that's fairly workable and that's going to stick onto the cork at the same time. The putty here gives it a bit more substance. If you use the PVA on its own, it tends to look a bit too much like you've just glued some sand on top, so this mix tends to give you a, a bit of a better effect. Alright, so once you've done that, use the stick to spread it onto the cork. If you have a bit of trouble and find it doesn't really want to come off the stick, then just add some more PVA glue into the mix, and that's going to make it a bit more workable. So yeah, just keep putting that stuff onto the cork. You can also use your fingers to sort of smoosh it into the surface if you like. It's a messy process, but it's going to give you a really good effect, so it's worth the hassle. You can buy pre-made texture pastes. Vallejo has quite a lot of decent ones, but I prefer to just make my own. That way I have more control over what's actually going on there. Once you have the cork well covered, clean off your little border. I'm using a sculpting tool to get rid of any excess gunk. Then I use a wet bit of toilet paper just to finish it off. You can actually mask this off before you apply the paste so that you don't need to clean it, but to be honest, for the amount of time that you spend doing the masking, you may as well just not bother and do this clean up in the end instead. It works out about the same, but it's up to you which you prefer. Once it's cleaned up, just set it aside and let it dry. It should take a few hours, but you might want to leave it overnight just to make sure. Anyway, once it was dried, I primed it with some Games Workshop Chaos Black Spray, and then I sprayed it from above at about a 60 degree angle with some Tamiya Super Fine White. And when I was doing this, I only sprayed from one direction. I didn't turn the base while I was spraying the white. That creates this pre-shading effect where the details are dark on one side and bright on the other. We'll be using this to our advantage when we paint it. To find out the secret behind that, tune in next Friday to see the full, unique painting process. Want to see more videos like this one? Click subscribe so you don't miss out. Don't forget, smash the like button and leave a comment to let me know what you thought of the video. Thanks again. Bye for now. Just rip a piece of the cork from the sheep. From the sheep. Fucking hell. <laughs> from the sheep. Too much influence from Angus. Alright.